We've made it to the end of trig graphs and equations. This is the review lesson. Remember, it's not every slide, it's just the key points from all the other lessons. If there is anything you are unsure of, you're best going back and looking at the individual lessons. But the key points. Way back at the start, we were introduced to radians. Up until then, you had measured angles in degrees, but mathematicians wanted something that was a bit more logical. Oh yeah. So, they took the radius of a circle, they bent it around the outside, and then joined it back up to the centre using another radius, and that formed an angle. That angle is known as one radian. How many radians can you fit inside a circle? Well, you can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, and a bit. The exact number of radians that you can fit works out to be 2 pi, which means that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, so 180 degrees is known as pi radians. First thing, really, that we have to do is to convert between degrees and radians. So to do that, to go from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi and you divide by 180. For example, 90 degrees, you introduce pi, you divide by 180, and you can simplify. Notice here that we don't use the degree sign. We don't really have any signs at all because angles are measured in radians unless the degree sign is shown. With this one here, again, we multiply by pi, divide by 180. What you get is 3 pi over 20. Most of the time you would just leave it as that. But sometimes you may have to work it out as a decimal. So you would just use the pi button on your calculator, do 3 times the pi button, divide by 20, and then write down what you would get. Obviously, it would be a decimal that just went on and on. So you would just write down one or two or three decimal places, or however many you were asked for. But, as I said, most of the time, just leave it as a fraction. To convert back the way, to go two degrees from radians, just do the opposite. This time you multiply by 180 and you divide by pi. A lot of the time you'll find in the fraction you'll have pi in the top and bottom, which will cancel, and then you're just simplifying your numbers. And it's the same with this one here. There are certain angles that come up all the time. Woo! like 30, 45, 60, and 90, and with them, you need to really know them off by heart uh, in radians. Most of them are easy enough, and these are the ones here that you see all the time, so you'd need to be able to switch between them. These ones are very, very common. After that, I introduced you to these funky triangles, yeah, and we found that these two triangles let you work out the exact values of sine, cos, and tan of 30, 45, and 60. Yes! So, you can use them to work out these exact values, and you can extend it to also include 0 and 90, but for them, you will need to use the graphs, because every 90 degrees, the answer is going to be either 1, 0, or negative 1. Just look out for the tan graph, though, because remember, at 90 degrees, or pi over 2, that would be undefined. That's your vertical asymptote. It's a line that the tan graph gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to, but never touches. So, it would be undefined. You can apply exact values to work out, then, the exact value of uh, multiples of 30 and 45. You can get, for example, the exact value of sine 150. To do that, put the angle in degrees, first of all, which it already is. Work out the quadrant, so 150 degrees is in the second quadrant. Work out the sine, well, sine's a positive there. So, and then work out the acute angle, how far it is away from 180 or from 0, 360. Just go with whichever one it's closer to. So that would be 30 degrees. Positive sine 30 and sine of 30 is a half using the exact value triangles. If you wanted to work out sine 300, do the same thing. Work out the quadrant that that is in. It's a negative there, so it's the same as negative sine. It's 60 degrees away from 0, 360 and use the exact value triangles. These examples were the same. You just had to put them in degrees first of all. This one here, you're going back 30 degrees, but remember, because it's repeated every 360, if you just go back 30 degrees, it's going to be the same as 330 degrees. 
and then work out what that would be using the same method. It's the same whenever you get something that doesn't lie within 0, 0,360. For this one, it's bigger than 360, so just take 360 away to find out what it would be. Just like that. With this one, you are having to work out the cost of 4, 240. First of all, work out the exact value, and then you're just uh, simplifying that. Nice and easy. Because this is a multiple of 90, you can just use the graphs. We also can apply it to answer these types of questions, work out the exact value of x, just think back to Sokatoa, don't forget any of these things that you have done in the past, that works out to be 30 degrees. After that we've moved on to Erin's absolute favourite, woo, trig graphs, let's hear it for sin x, cos x and tan x, woo. After that we looked at the period and the amplitude after a quick recap. We had Connor thinking about them, sketching trig functions. He's probably still thinking about graph transformations. And we looked at the period and the amplitude. Remember, the period is the length of one cycle of the periodic, which means repeated, wave. And the period you do 360 divided by this number in front of x for sine or cos. The amplitude, it's the distance between the middle of the graph and the top, as you can see here. We had another example where the graph was drawn out and we also had the equation and we had to work out the period and the amplitude, either doing it from the graph or from the equation. We were kind of applying that to look at the maximum and minimum. Remember James absolutely loving this. The maximum was the highest value, the minimum was the lowest value, and you had to... James, you want to talk this one? No, you look like you are. We had to look at just this middle part first of all, sine 2x, and we had to think about what the maximum and minimum of that would be. Then we were multiplying uh, the, that by 4, it's being stretched by 4, and then we had to subtract 1 to get the maximum minimum. Look at James's wee happy face. We had a few examples with that where we had to work out the value of x which gave us the maximum. So for that you were thinking about whereabouts it would occur and you were solving this similar to one of the questions with the phase angle. We then moved on to solving trig equations, looking at that in more detail. This was just a basic example, but we were using radians because we've never used radians before. So we had to solve it using them. The next example here, we were changing the interval. So all the questions that we had done up till then had us looking for answers between 0 and 360. But here, no, 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 no. It's not 0, 360, it's 0, 720. So we had to add 360 on to both our answers that we found. And you can see you're doing that because the wave is just repeated. That kind of led into multiple angles. If you end up with a number in front of x, like sine 3x or cos 2x, you first of all have to alter the interval. So instead of x, we have here 3x, so you times both these values by 3. We're then wanting to do what we did in the last example, so keep adding 360, get all the answers between 0 and 1080, and then correct for that by just dividing by 3. Just make sure that if you're asked for it in degrees, you're answering in degrees, and check if you're asked for the answers between 0 and 360, all your answers lie between 0 and 360. Next one, example 4. Solving this one here, it was very similar. Uh, we had the interval between 0 and 2 pi. We had to alter the interval first. We were working with radians, but again, you're adding on 2 pi, 360 degrees. Number 5, that's when we were on the second lesson with solving trig equations. We looked at squared and factorising. This one was one with cos squared. Remember, if you end up with a cos squared, it means cos x all squared. You'd have to square root both sides. And when you square root, for example, 25, you can have plus 5 or you can have minus 5. So we had to take both the positive and the negative, which means then that we'd be using all 1, 2, 3, 4 quadrants. Let's hear it for all four quadrants. Woo! It means you're going to have all the answers. 
Example 6, you had to solve 4 sine squared plus 11 sine x plus 6 equals 0. Two decimal places, x is between 0 and 2 pi. For this one, because you've got sine squared, sine and a number, you can think back to the olden days where you had x squared, x and a number. You then factorise that. As I said, at the time, you just go off to the side and factorise and then swap x back for sine x back to your question and then work out your answers. Just remember, if you have uh, sine x plus 2, for example, sine x is negative 2, well that doesn't exist. The maximum is 1 and the minimum is negative 1. This one here you can keep on going with and then get your answers. Number 7, we again had a cos squared but we've also got sine. If you end up with cos and sine, well most of the time you will have to swap one of them. So here, cos squared, think back to your trig identities. We know cos squared is 1 minus sine squared, so we can swap that there. Multiply out the brackets, and then you get sine squared, sine, and a number equals 0. So just like the last example, you were factorising, and then you had to solve that. Again, sine x equals 3 does not exist, so there's no solution. No solution! And you had to get both of these answers for sine x equals 1 half. Number eight was where we had the phase angle. Remember, you had to alter the interval. So we don't just have x is between 0 and 60. We've got 2x minus 20. So double that, take away 20. Double that, take away 20. So we're looking for all the answers between negative 20 and 700. So doing that, you can add 360 onto your answers. Check that you don't go past 700. You can also take away 360 from both your answers. Check you don't go below 20. In this case, you would have if you took anything away. So again, you get more answers. This one here was very, 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 very similar. We had to divide by 3, first of all. We've also got 2x plus pi over 4. So again, you're changing the interval. So here, you would double it, add pi over 4. Uh, double that, add pi over 4. And then you would get radians. Sometimes it's a bit confusing when you're thinking about radians, when you're thinking about the decimals, so you might want to just imagine that as a decimal. Just work it out in the calculator. Pi button divided by 4, 0 0.79. Uh, 9 times pi button divided by 4, 7.07. .07. And then just when you're working this out, maybe just put it into a decimal and check you don't go over that, and check you don't go under that when you are working it out. And you get both of your answers correct to one decimal place. Again, there's no degrees sign. You're asked for it in radians. That's radians correct to one decimal place. That was everything that we did with trig graphs and equations. As I said, this is just a quick recap. You might be using this just before the exam to make sure you understand everything. Anything you are unsure of, either ask Calissa or go back and look at the other lessons. Phew! Woohoo! We made it to the end. Bye! You can turn it off.